Um, yeah, you know, past a number of years, uh, I think I have uh, made presentations roughly 100 times at, for different um, different occasions. But this one is going to be the first first one for me to be uh, to face such an audience. You know, the, the past 100 uh, seminars presentations were all made to the professional astronomers, professional solar physicists. But today, we are facing an uh, amateur astronomer uh, audience. I'm not sure, you know, what I'm going to talk about. So I'm trying to make the things simple. So I'm going to make tonight the next one hour to be a movie night. So I'm trying to show some nice movies that best represent that best represent the sun and the solar physics studies in the past number of years. Can we somehow come up this? Uh, is it possible to come up this night? Uh, uh, no, because we're we're recording. We, but you can turn it down. Uh, okay, never mind. Yeah. There's only one switch. There's one switch. That's it. Um, let's give it a as you please. Okay. Never mind. Uh, that's. <laughs> so after after one hour, I, I I think I hope I have two messages for you to take back home. The first message is our sun, our star, the sun is very fascinating with many many interesting events. And the second message I want I want you. To to keep in mind is my colleagues and, and myself, all the astro and solar, solar astronomers are working very hard and have done perfect, wonderful jobs to understand the sun, to make, to predict what's going to happen for the sun next, and to monitor its activities, and, and, and make space weather forecast for the space uh, communications, space satellites. So I'm going to to divide my talk into three different parts. The first part, maybe a maybe long, uh, slightly longer than the other parts, is a fascinating start. The second, second day, I'm going to speak on the solar activity cycle. And in the end, because myself is a heavy seismologist, I cannot leave this place without talking something about heavy seismology and solar interior. So before that, I want to tell you that the most movies and pictures shown in this presentation were made by uh, SOHO, the mission, NASA, NASA mission SOHO, Solar and Hyperspheric Observatory, which was launched into space uh, in December, December 1995. It's already 18 years old, but it's still working. Um, and the other space, uh, NASA space mission, Solar Dynamics Observatory. It was launched about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Soho carries Soho carry uh, a bunch of instruments, uh, including Michelson Doppler MDI, which is uh, which was built by our group. We we run this this instrument for about uh, 30 year, uh, 15 years, from 1995 to 2011. Um, now it's. Now we start operating this instrument. Uh, the other instrument is the IT, and we talk about it, show movies from it. Lasso is, Lasso was built by, uh, by the Navy, uh, US, US Navy, um, and, and other instruments. SDO was launched uh, three years, four and a half years ago. It carries uh, three instruments. One is hydrotechnic and magnetic imager, known as HMI. It was also built by our group. Um, and part of it, and atmospheric imaging assembly, known as AIA, mm -hmm. it was built by um, Lockheed Martin Space and Astronomical Laboratory, located in Taiwan. It's just across, across uh, from Stanford University campus. And the E uh, is an instrument uh, built by University of Colorado Boulder. Let's see. So are all these instruments currently somewhere in the space? Right. This is the three. These three instruments will unbound uh, solar, solar dynamics observatory uh, space space satellite. And it's 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 serving 
around the, around the, the Earth, um, keeping uh, watching the sun 24 hours every day without any interruption. It's, it's already been there for around half years, and it's going to be there for the next 10 years also, roughly 10 years. No one knows. It may it may go it may go wrong, but but the planet is going to be there for, for 10 more years. Okay, the first part of my talk is our fascinating stuff. Okay, this is the movie showing almost every, including almost everything from the sun. This is the photosphere. The photosphere has um, consensus of time. I'm going to go see the details later. This is um, the first one was chronosphere. This is the corona. The corona has a lot of activities. It has solar flares like the previous one. Now we go a little bit further from the sun, which is the space. This is the this circle is the sun. It has chronal mass ejections going on all the time. By the way, not that we will see because the sun is so bright. And the background, you know, is everything is blue around the sun. We are not able to see the those 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 uh, 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 nice injections, but this is just a great review, trip a trivial. I will talk about everything later, so don't worry. Now let me show a little a little bit of history. You understand that you know Galileo Galilei was the first person, was the first human ever who observed, observed the heavenly, heavenly objects using a telescope. It was the first one. Now, we, we are all followers 400 years later. To be more precise, he observed this 404 years ago in uh, 1609. We, we know that Galileo was the first person who found the four moons of the Jupiter. So, uh, so we, sometimes we also call it Galileo, Galileo, Galileo and Moons, because he was the discoverer of the four moons of the Jupiter. He was also the first person who observed the, the creatures on the lunar surface. And we, most of us probably knew that, but few people know that. Few people know that. The, actually, he was also the first person who observed the sunspots. 400 years ago, this was his own hand drawing. He truly, he truly thinks himself. And now he scanned his, 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 his drawings and made his movie. So, he found his, his saw sun spots in a, in a photosphere. Uh, the sun has different, different layers. The, 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 the one we, we saw in our, using our eyes was is a, is a photosphere, above it is a chromosphere and the corona. I'm going to talk about that later. So, solar photosphere. Okay. Uh, for this one, for this movie, there are, there are quite, quite a lot, a lot of sunspots going on. What I can tell you is, Galileo Galileo was very lucky that he saw so many, so many sunspots. <laughs> you know, in my past 15 years of solar physics studies, I never saw so many sunspots at, at any given moment. I can show you next. Is what I show is this is the this is the period that I saw most of the sunspots. Not now, not now. Here, look. This this happened in the, during the time of uh, February to April of 2001. That was 12 years ago. That that is that was most of the sunspots I saw during my lifetime. I was not, not that lucky as Galilei. So this is solar photosphere. Solar photosphere was characterized by sunspots. These, these are the most prominent features in the, in the photosphere. This is a, a very nice picture of sunspots taken uh, by a Japanese satellite. You know it? It's a Japanese satellite, but actually the, the, the instruments the inf uh, some instruments on board this satellite was made by Lockheed Martin. So this 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 picture was taken by uh, uh, an optical telescope made by Lockheed Martin. So sunspots sunspots are typically have two distinct structures. 
one is sensible under, it's purely dark, it's purely cool, it's about 1,000 degrees lower uh, cooler than the surrounding areas. 1,000 Kelvin, 1,000 Kelvin cooler. These, these areas are 50, 50, uh, 700 Kelvin in temperature. 5700 Kelvin. And the other, the other feature from the sensor is the, the surrounding area, surrounding the temperature is called the temperature. It's right between, the temperature is right between the, the temperature and, and the quiet sun. So the sensors are actually the areas where strong magnetic fields concentrate. The typical magnetic field thing of this area is about 200,000 Gauss. So Gauss is, Gauss is a, a, a unit of uh, for magnetic field strength. Uh, the standard unit, unit for magnetic field strength is, is Tesla. So one Tesla is 10,000 Gauss. So, so roughly, this is like 2,000 Gauss is 0.2 uh, Tesla. So the sensors have left times. It doesn't. It doesn't go. It doesn't stay there forever. Sometimes some some sensors can decay away in just a few days, but others can last for a few months. A few solar rotations. You know, because one solar rotation is roughly one month, so it can last three or four rotations before decaying away. Sensors have extended structures. So. Typically, we saw focus here. It had just some, some dark features on, on, on the surface. But, but we have, if we go above the focus here, we see its extended structures. Let's do it again. This is the focus here. Dark features are set spots. These are magnetic fields corresponding to the, to, to the Chromosphere structure. Uh, this uh, previous is a is, uh, uh, chromosphere, and now that is fast as in this place. So let's go, let's, let's do it again. So magnetic fields, this is uh, this is chromosphere observed by Helsing K, this is C sharp. This is this is the helium. Uh, it's also chromosphere, this is the lower uh, corona, this is uh, this is a, a high, uh, higher corona, this is this is corona with a temperature of what the, uh, a million degrees, a million Kelvin. So this these different lines represent different temperature structures. So white light, white light is just a photosphere. It's a light, 5,700 Kelvin. Uh, the, the chromosphere is like 10,000 Kelvin. And the body, you know, it, it goes up and up. And here in the end, it's like somewhere between one, 1 million Kelvin to 100 million Kelvin. It's, it has very, very hot temperature. So where sunspots can grow and sunspots can decay. So where, where do sunspots come from? Sunspots are magnetic fields. Uh, the, the, the exhibition of the magnetic fields. So the magnetic fields are generated inside the sun because the magnetized plasma are, 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 are low in density, it's, it's lighter than the surrounding areas. So because of the buoyancy, it goes up from, from the interior to the surface. Once it goes up to the surface, it forms sunspots. So let me show you the future of the sunspots can grow. So here, this area, look at this area. This, this is the nothing here right now. And now the goes come down. Just in, in merely two a couple of days, one or two days, you know, it comes from nothing to this huge area. This is the area. Let me, let me give you one example. Perhaps you don't know how large this is. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, this one is about, you know, 
right here to here is bottom three Earths. So because the, the, the radius of the sun is 700 magnimeters of 700,000 kilometers, the, the radius of the Earth is, is, is less than 7,000 7, kilometers. So the, the radius of the sun is 100 times larger than the Earth. A typical sunspot is three times, in, in terms of size, in terms of size, it's three times larger than the Earth. So in total, it can be, it can easily, it can easily put it in 10 Earths here. Well, where do the cooler temperatures come from? I think because, you know, the, the sun is hot. Mm -hmm. It's hot is, is because, you know, we have, we have continuous convection. You know, because it's, it's hard in, inside because of the convection mm -hmm. and the temperature is, is like a few thousand Kelvin. But the, mag the magnetized plasma, it, the magnetized plasma is, is sensible. So, it, it is, because of the presence of magnetic field lines, it, it prohibits the convection into the interior, into the sensors. So that means the hot stuff cannot get into this area. So you say the hot stuff's on top and the cool stuff's below? Um, no, hot stuff is surrounding it. I mean, the hot stuff is everywhere. It's a normal, a normal stuff. It is it's like 50, 50, uh, 50, 100 Kelvin. And uh, because the magnetic lines are here and in this area, they exist, they, 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 pre they prevent the convection going into this area. And that means, so it cools down. It's the hot stuff are not, able, are not able to get into this area. So, is it like radiating heat out? So it's convection, yeah. you know. <coughs> it acts it's like it's insulator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, it insulates the, 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 convective, the, con the convective cells. The convection bringing hot stuff into the into this into this part. So um, I get that part, but what I don't understand is how there's a volume in the sun that's cooler than the surface. Cooler than the surface? Cooler. Yeah. Than the no, it's hardly under the surface. That's what I would have thought. So yeah, it is. Open up a hole where right. you see the stuff underneath it. Yeah, yeah. But it's hot. It is hot. It is hot in the surface. The photosphere is the cooler, is the coolest part everywhere in the sun. If you go, go below it, it's becoming harder and harder. If you go above it, it's also becoming harder and harder. Right. So what yes. you're saying is that the, the, the magnetic field that, that, that happens inside the sun right. is so strong that that increase, almost like an insulating barrier around mm -hmm. a blob that's right. a thousand Kelvin cooler right. than the surrounding. Is it like a blob coming to the surface, like in a lava well, lamp, or is it a continuous stream? You know, be far below the photosphere. I'm not, I guess no one knows if it's cooler than it's surrounding area, okay. because, you know, it's, it's a tiny, it's, it's, it's tiny, it's small in terms of areas, in, in terms of volumes. It's, it's very, it's very dense. Once it goes up to the surface, it expands quite a lot. How deep are the sunspots? Um, that's a good question. No one knows for sure. But uh, the general the general idea is it, it forms the magnetic fields form about 200,000 kilometers below the surface. And once it generates, once the magnetic field is generated, it, 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 it emerges to the surface. But no one knows if it has roots somewhere. Uh, I guess it's it can be. It has different opinions. Uh, they are fighting with each other. Someone says. Okay, let's see. A size box can be paid. Let me show you one example. This is a, uh, it, it, in just a, a couple of days, a very large size box it shrinks to a very small area. Okay, uh, that is the photosphere. The photosphere is characterized by sunspots. And uh, if we go just a few hundred kilometers above, that is the chromosphere. The chromosphere is very well understood, very well studied, because you know, it's visible, 
typically visible in H alpha. H alpha has been well studied, well used in astronomical uh, observations, and it's well understood. So, um, the chromosphere is characterized by uh, sunspots and filaments. This is this one is both. This is a sensor with uh, amber and the amber. And all around, it, all in the photosphere, there are, there are uh, tons of, tons of uh, filaments. Well, and some of them are really, really huge. For example, this one is a huge, long filament. The, the, this filament is, is just, just in the, about, uh, just surrounding uh, a sensible area. But it doesn't open like that. Sometimes, uh, I guess it's not very clear, but, but it is here. Uh, this, is, this is a filament that goes to the sun, to the, to the beginning. And you can look at it here. This is like, uh, it's, it's some interesting structures, but it's the same thing. We, we give it a different name, it's called pregnancy. But it's actually, it's also filament. It's just because this is right under the name, it shows up like, you know, like a year of a, a person. Uh, so it's called prominence. It's prominent, prominence and filament are the same thing, just because but at different locations. Um, filaments can erupt. Don't tell on. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one. I can show you one movie of filament. So that this filament erupts. It disappears, and then below it, it has two bands of brightening areas, which are called layers. So this is a filament eruption, and followed by the double ribbon source layer. So this this is the time scale of this this movie is like four hours. So uh, in reality, if you observe the sun, you are, you are not able to see you know something like this. It's 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 two hours. It's not you know not in two seconds or three seconds. Okay. When they talk about flares, um, and they talk about it coming towards the earth. You know, we'll get an announcement that there's a there's yeah. been a flare, got it out of uh, Vex power or whatever. Yeah. And that's what comes towards the earth and that's what causes our auroras. That's right. Is that is, are they always a double flare like that? No. Or? No, no. Okay. This is this is just a, a small sort of layer caused by a filament eruption. But the typical this is not a typical sense of the typical sort of layer. Typical sort of layer occurs in aggregates. And two regions are the regions with a sensible in it. Okay. So this is just one, one, one specific example. I will talk about solar layers and 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 reductions to the later. Okay. So this is this is not a typical uh, solar layer. This one is. Look at this one. I have an um, region here, the sensible here with a, a bright area close to it. Now, if the solar layer occurs, look at it. A layer, a layer occurs, and then it becomes this area, the huge area, brightens. And then, what's more interesting is, after this eruption, see here, look, there's a, a white ruin is pointing away from it. That is, that is what we call it, we call it a marine way. Just think about this. This is the sun. This is this is 700,000 kilometers in, in, in radius. In about two hours, the, the wave, the elevation, is points away from the sunspots with a rapid speed. So the speed can, you can imagine, you know, it's very huge. This speed is, the propagation of that wave is like 1,000 kilometers per second. It's a huge speed. Okay, later we'll talk about some other waves. This is this is this is a wave happening in the chromosphere known as marine wave. Okay, now um, we can take on the, the, the life of human beings. We talk about photosphere. We talk about chromosphere. 
Now we go a little bit about that with solar corona. The so previously, before the space age, we don't know we don't know the existence of a corona. We only knew it because the occurrence of total solar eclipse. When a when a total solar eclipse occurs, we are able to see the bright the bright areas around the sun. This is the more, right? This is the more. It blocks the sun, and we see some structures around it. These are these these are the solar corona. We have this these lines. This, this represents the North Pole and the South Pole. So this has magnetic structures, right? This, these structures represent the magnetic field lines because solar plasma can be trapped by the magnetic fields. So the plasma, the, the structure of the plasma represents the magnetic field structure. This is this is the before the space age because we are not able to see. The, the corona, corona is hot, we, the, we, we can only see the, in, in the ultraviolet and the extreme ultraviolet UV or EUV uh, spectrum. So we are not able to see it on the Earth. We, we have to use the spacecrafts or rockets to see these structures. So with, with the advent of the space age, we are able to see the sun in different spectrum. So this one shows a movie of uh, so a solar eruption. Uh, okay, let me let me explain it again. This is this is the, the, the whole star in in the uh, in ultraviolet. So a satellite layer occurs. This is, this layer is facing the sun. Its eruption can can direct mass a lot of mass into the Earth and interrupts our, interrupts our, our space communications, our telecommunications using space spacecraft. You see this again. <coughs> you see that layer, it occurs, and a large amount of energetic particles hits the camera. So that, that's, that's what we saw was, you know, the snowflakes is uh, is is energetic particles. This is CME. So I'm going to talk about CME later. So let's just talk about solar flares right now. This is a closer look of the same event by use of a different another spacecraft. So can I turn off the light? Thank you. Uh, let's let me play this movie again. I mean, you, you, you have closely to see the back picture moves away. That is the filament. Because filaments, filaments are a cool, a cool features on the solar surface. In the ultraviolet, we are not able to see it. it we are only, only able to see it here. It's because you know, it moves over towards us. And we see some feature of it. This is solar layer. This is a layer occurs, it, it forms some a very nicely in loop. It's called post layer loop. It's, it represents uh, the magnetic lines. The magnetic lines are like this. So I want to show you another another movie. This is very interesting. Uh, it is interesting because it's a filament, filament eruption. The filament sweeps across the above area is these loops are magnetic loops. So this this filament sweeps across these loops. And what's interesting is these loops, you know, it sways, it sways it swings a little bit, and it also is uh, up and down. So it's very interesting because you know this is like a rubber band or, or a spring, you know, it it carries very rich information of the sun. Why? Because this can tell us, this can tell us, you know, what's the magnetic field the strength along this loop? What is the density? What is the temperature along the loop? And what's the temperature and density beside the loop? So this kind of study is very interesting for us to understand solar corona. Now, next what I want to show you is a huge, a huge filament eruption. So this is the sun, you know, from 
here is 7, 700,000 kilometers. So this is a hill in Russia. And this movie is going to play again. Play again. What I want to emphasize, I want you to notice are three things. First is a film in Russia. You know, it's a huge amount mass erupts from the from chromosphere to high above the sun. Some of these mass will escape from the sun and it goes into a vast space. And some of them will go to the earth. This is the first, first thing. The second thing is once this material fall down to the sun again, it causes some brightening. Let's see it again. It erupts. And some materials fall down to the sun again. And it causes some brightening, some small scale flares. So why why does that happen? You know, it's not it's not as what do we think, you know, some it's like one, one mass hits another one, it causes some breaking in some heat. It's not as simple as that. Because sort of layer, it happens because of magnetic reconnection. The typical suspects, typical layers are caused by magnetic reconnection. When a magnetic field line reconnects, a great amount of magnetic energy converts into kinetic energy and it converts into heat. The kinetic energy will speed up the electronic e ele uh, electrons and the protons and make them becoming energetic particles. The energetic particles escape from the sun into a vast space and some of those energetic particles go to the fall back, go go below 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 the chromosphere and hits the chromosphere. Those are those are sort of layers. But these layers are just because of the collision of mass. So it's different. This is the second phenomenon we can see from this, this movie. The third phenomenon is, let me replay this, this movie. Okay, let's, let's do it to the play again. Okay. Once it occurs, see, they break in the breaking break uh, circle, like a ripple expanding from that area. Um, let's wait. It's a very quick, so you have to focus a little bit. It's a very quick. It's, it's a kind of a corona wave. Heavens? Oh, yeah. 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 It expands very quickly in, in a speed of uh, 1,000 kilometers per second, switching across the solar disk. What is it? What is that wave? We really don't know. I'm going to show you something similar later. Okay, that is, here is a, a different kind of wave. It's called EIT wave. It was first observed <coughs> by the instrument EIT, but this one is observed by SUAIA. Okay, a flare occurs. See this again. A flare occurs here. It occurs, and some, some structure perturbation, look. Some sort of perturbation sweeps across the, 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 the vast area and propagates away. Can you ask a question? Sure. Yeah, on your previous. Can we continue? Yes. Two questions. Because that looks, the flare eruption looks really like a volcano eruption to me. Who doesn't know anything about solar physics? <laughs> so I have two questions. One is, how often does that happen? The second question is, when that actually happens so far away, do we feel anything on Earth at all? Right. The first question is how often. It's, you know, so the sun has maximum years, activity maximum years, and activity minimum years. In the minimum years, you know, it doesn't happen maybe in one year or two years. If in the, in the maximum years, it can happen a dozen of, dozens of times every day. So it's really difficult to say. But very large, uh, large players, very large players, we call it X class players, this can happen in the maximum years. I guess it's like 10 or 20 such events in one year. I mean, 
the players I love in this one is just like you know, 20 times per year. The second question is, can we feel it? No, as a human being, we are, we are not able to feel anything about it. But, but later, in the next few slides, I will talk something, you know, it has, it has some direct, direct impact to the Earth. So next, okay, I talked about photosphere, chromosphere, corona, and now I want to talk about coronal mass ejection. So once the, the eruption occurs, no matter it's a human eruption, no matter it is a flare, and very often it throws away a great amount of mass into the vast space. That is what we say, fear, not fear. This one is a comet. Like this. Okay, and this one is called, called corona mass ejection. It's caused by, even very often it's caused by a filament eruption and a solar flare. So, of course, the comets, the comets are very, a, a very favorite, a favorite uh, object for, for amateur astronomers. So I guess, once a comet comes, I mean, many of you feel very interested. So what I can tell you is that this is this is a Soho Soho Glasgow. This is uh, you know an instrument on on, on Soho station. It has a reserve more than two thousand comets, more than way more than you can observe. In just ten years, it will reserve two thousand comets. But the majority of these comets were never seen by human beings because they are very weak, they are very small. They they, they are very close to the sun, we are not able to see it at night. And unfortunately, the majority of these, com these comets will never come back again. They disappear, they got vanished. Some of them fall into the sun. Some of them get evaporated by the heat of the sun. And some of them just became broken into pieces because of the strong gravitational force of the sun. So, next, I want to show you a very, very famous close encounter of a comet with the sun. This is the comet Lang Zhao. Say, fear. Can someone take a look at the Thank you. Say, this one goes, a comet Lang Zhao goes slowly past to the sun. Goes to the other side. Two days later, you see it again. It survives from the close encounter. And now we have, it has two comets, two tails. Yeah. Okay, let's see, let's see next. It's a close look. So here comes, comes the comet, and quickly goes to the other side, and then goes away. Maybe you didn't notice when it comes back. Let's see this movie again. So it comes and goes to the other side of the sun and gets out of here. It's just merely a few hours. Just imagine, you know, the sun is a huge body and it goes around the sun to the other side and comes back in just a few hours. And, and very, very interesting thing. Let's see this again. This, this movie is two days. Two days later, after it's gone, its tail is still here. Two days later, the tail is still on the other side. Now, this is not the most amazing movie. Then what I'm going to show you next is really, really amazing. Left and from left to the right. And now it goes 
当时。In the in the sky, I'm not sure how many of you saw these kind of events in the higher latitudes, like in Alaska and in the, and sometimes in Montana, you are able to see. This is, these are very beautiful events. So all these events are caused by the solar eruptions. Once the solar erupts, the materials go into the space. Some of them will meet the sun, the Earth, and gets trapped by the Earth by the, by the magnetic fields of the Earth. Then migrates to the high latitudes and hits the atmosphere. That's the whole story. Okay, that's just the first part of my talk. I guess it goes too long. A couple of questions. Sure. Because when um. The storms hit. I think a big flare happened in 1859. That's right. That's the biggest one. Biggest and and um, another one happened in 1989 in Canada. That's right. And and disrupted um, this electricity. That's the biggest one ever recorded. Yeah. And so um, I've heard the statistic that if one hit us again, mm -hmm. like the one in 1859, that it basically would disrupt. All of our power and electricity for decades to take to rebuild our infrastructure, right. and then what's the difference between that kind of storm that disrupts all of our power, as it were, because of of our dependence on it, mm -hmm. and the beautiful mm -hmm. um, auroras that we see? They yeah. don't seem as severe or as di as dangerous as it's not these. It's not dangerous at all for auroras. It's not dangerous. Yeah, I can tell you in two thousand and twelve. Great. When the October 31st, when that event happened, mm -hmm. auroras could be yeah. seen in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, auroras were not dangerous, it, but, but some players were, were uh, you know, very dangerous, especially in the space age. You know, if it happens in 1859, it only interrupts the telegram yeah. communication between America and Europe. Mm -hmm. And now if it happens, it can interrupt, it can disrupt all the space space satellites and the telecommunications. It, if that happens, you know, it has two conditions. One, it must be a very, very huge solar flare. Mm -hmm. um, the one like in performance theory is huge enough. Unfortunately, it's not directly to us. Directly to us. Yeah, yeah. So this is the second condition. That means, you know, if it happens directly to us, it's going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. So, two conditions. It must be huge, must directly to us. So, no one can predict if it happens or not. I'm going to tell you that this solar activity cycle is very weak. We don't see, we haven't seen, any strong players like the one in 2001 and the one in 2003. Not even close. However, it's just like, you know, I mean, even if there are not many activities, not many players, but if one player, it happens to be large, it happens to be direct towards the other, it can be large enough to us, it, it, it can stop all the tele telecommunications because is that what you're working on? In, a, in other words, I, well, you can't predict when it's going to happen. Are we working on ways to we, mitigate the damage? When it, when first of all, I don't my, myself don't work on that, but I have my colleagues working on that. So it's, it's still an ongoing uh, story, you know, just like the, uh, a tornado. You know, we can predict that a tornado may happen. Give you a prediction of you know a possibility, eighty percent of chance it happens, but it may not happen at all, and you cannot precisely determine mm -hmm. the location of a tornado yeah. where it happens mm -hmm. and how how large it's going to be. So if it's on Earth, we're not able to tell that. How possible can we tell you know, something happening in Amazon? So we can only tell you a possibility of how large something is going to happen. 
It may happen, it may not happen. And how large? It can be you know, one order of magnitude different. And whether it's directly towards the Earth or not, you know, it can be a small, the Earth is just a, you know, a, very, a very tiny thing in space. A very, very small angle difference can miss the Earth. So, it's just that. Like, okay, the second topic uh, is solar and TV cycles. I'm going to be quick. So the sun has an 11, 11 year cycle. It's not a very, it's not always to be active. We have talked about the sunspots. It seems the sunspots are always there. It's not true. It's only, it has a cycle. It has an 11 year cycle, like this one shows in 1996. It's a minimum year. 2001 is a maximum year. Um, let me show you a movie. This is a, a one solar cycle. 11 days of spotty space in one year. That's the longest. This is the second longest, but, but it's the longest one in the past century. So look at the historical number. We have 400 years of continuous sunspot monitoring. So 400 years ago, it was Galileo Galilei starting observing the sunspot. It's about here. And only starting from 1715, that's 250 years, 260 years ago, people started with the systematic observing the sunspots. This is solar cycle number one. And 250 years ago, we have cycle two. This is this year. What's interesting here is that after Galilei Galilei, 50 years later, it goes into you know, a decade of, of one decade, not one decade, a few decades, a few decades of spot these days. 
the Earth, the solar, the sun, went to a very, very minimal, very, very low activity. It happened to be associated with the little ice age in Europe. So look at this picture. This, this is a, this is a, a picture from the uh, past 500 years ago. Oh, no. oh, 350 years ago. See, everywhere was covered by snow, and the river was frozen. And, then, and he's skating on the river. So it happened to be the coldest time associated with the minimum solar activity. It's very funny. It may be, it may have some it may have, it might have some direct connection. It might not. We don't know. But what I can tell you also between also in these years in China, you know, one dynasty replaced by another. They, you know, people said that it might be related with the very cold weather. And the very cold weather might be related with the very low solar activity. Do you know which, uh, where this painting was, was made of, or whatever that is? I have no idea. You can check Google. You have to have the Google label as page. So let's look at the last 100 years. Uh, let's just look at the black line here. This, this shows the, the monthly census number. So every month, in the next seven years, every month, the typical has about, you know, one, somewhere between 150 and 200 test spots. But this one, this is solar cycle, this year, supposedly to be the maximum year of the solar activity. But we didn't see any. The top here is, is even below 70. So it's, it's, it's nearly half less than the other of the year. So it's very disappointing. This is the prediction of what's going to happen for this solar cycle. This solar cycle started in uh, 2009, and compared with the last solar cycle, 2001, it has roughly 170 sunspots every one month. But this one will have, you know, a total of less than 100. And this year, here, it is exactly right now. It is exactly right now, the latter half of this year. The prediction is like 70 cents for one month. So this one shows uh, the butterfly diagram of magnetic fields. Ever since the 1970s, you know, people have people started the routine observation of magnetic fields of the sun. There are a few interesting phenomena here. One is, you know, if the if the uh, yellow is the positive polarity of the magnetic field, the negative, the blue is negative. If, if the white hemisphere is dominated by one sign, the other hemisphere is dominated by the opposite sign. Yeah, this is the first phenomenon. The second phenomenon is if this cycle is dominated by one polar polarity, the next cycle is going to be dominated by the opposite polarity. Okay, the third phenomenon we want to see is in the polar area, you know, about 70 degrees, 80 degrees, the polar area is often dominated by one sun for about 11 years. The sun change or the polarity reversal, we call it the polarity reversal, happens during the maximum years. This year is maximum year, that means the the polarity is going to revert, reverse, you know, this year, you know, in the both colors. If you, if you read news these days, if you read the uh, sense news, you may have seen some, you know, about some news about the polar, polar reversal. It happened just, you know, two or three days ago. This is, this is a piece of news made by us. If you read new, another news, I'm going to talk about it uh, a few slides later. It's about uh, variable flows. That's the news about me. So, I mean, in the past a few months, we made a lot of the news. 
This is this is observed by Stanford School Observatory. Stanford has a very small solar observatory in the big tissue area. It's right between Highway 280 and Stanford campus. It has it has uh, continuous observation in the sun for more than three decades. It's as as far as old as me. So it 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 observed one, two, three, four polar reversals. This is the fourth polar reversal that we observed. So the polar reversal, it may be the news. I mean, people are more curious about polar reversals of the sun. Some people get scared. What happened to the sun? No, there's nothing to be scared. You know, if you read news, you may know that the Earth is going to have a polar reversal in the next 500, 500 years. It's going to be something big. You know, it only happens every a few hundred thousand years. If it happens in the next 200 years, it's going to be something big. Because, you know, we rely. The Earth's magnetic field protects us from the solar eruptions. And birds, summer birds, migratory birds, relies, they rely on magnetic field lines to, to, to get directions, to get directions for their migration. So if, if the polar, if the polar, polar reversal happens on the Earth, it's going to be something big. But for the sun, it's nothing. It's just 11 years thing. It happens every 11 years. If it doesn't happen, it's going to be scary. If it happens every 11 years, is it tied to um, the activity of flares? Because you said right. that's on an 11-year cycle. Exactly. That's what we have this picture in there. So the polarity reversal mm -hmm. in the polar area, it happens just, just in the maximum years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the, in the low latitudes, it becomes the maximum. But in the, in the, in the polar region, the, the reversal is happening. Right. If you look at it very carefully, this picture here. What in one priority, for example, is not the hemisphere, is dominated by negative negative polarity. The negative polarity is gradually migrating towards the sun, towards the equator. This is the migration. It gradually moves. On the other hand, the magnetic fields are transported towards the polar region. This is transport, this is transport. It's not the migration. This is migration. This is transport. So next, I'm going to go in my third topic, hydro seismology and solar interior. Before talking about hydro seismology, I want to spend a few minutes, one minute, about uh, seismology. Earthquakes, uh, earthquakes are not rare. Are not rare in Bay Area. You know, it happens every few years, maybe not, maybe not. a few times every year. I didn't feel like it in the past couple of years. Um, so it's not a rare. Uh, and the seismology as a recent field, it started in this area. It's only because of 1906 San Francisco big earthquake. That's what I believe. This is San Francisco University. San Francisco University was when found and it is open, it opened in 1891. 15 years after its opening, the, the, the big earthquake happened. This is the date, this is the previous date, you know, this is the top drive, and then this is the University Avenue of Taiwan. But it's not there, it's not there any longer. What happened? It collapsed during the the, the, the San Francisco earthquake. So earthquake is a bad thing, but it's also a good thing. It has started a new research field in seismology. The seismology can help us to understand the, so the, the Earth's interior structure. This is a very famous research result, highlighted in 1996. You know, the Earth rotates. Here, the North Pole is its, pole, its axis pole. But in the interior for the core of the Earth, it rotates with a different axis. This axis is pointing about 85 degrees latitude. So all these results come from the, the, the seismology. It's because, because the earthquake, you know, 
it brings us some information from the interior. This is exactly the same thing happening in the sun. Oh, let me show you another picture. It's a cool thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, Happening in, happen in the Los Angeles area is an angle in Oklahoma. It's not a big thing. And science could reconstruct the, 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 the propagation of the earthquake just using you know, the seismic observation, seismic recordings of a number of stations. It's very cool. It's not, it's not observed from a space. It's not. It's not. It's, it's Reconstructed using computer models. The same thing happens on the, on the Amazon. So this is a layer. A layer induced a centric. The layer, the energetic particles hits the photosphere. <coughs> and the ripple comes from the center. That's a centric. Well, if you think this is like, you know, if you throw a stone in a lake and the ripples is cut, you are wrong. This is not, this is not, this is not like that. What I can tell you is, this is like, the, the perturbations, the disturbance, goes into the interior of the sun and comes back to the surface. And continuously doing so, it forms a ripple, it's funny, but it's not a surface thing. It goes into the interior and comes back. And it carries information of the solar interior. If you can observe the sun, this is this is only showing the photosphere, the Doppler observations of the sun. It it shows oscillations. You know, everywhere, everywhere on the sun is oscillating. It's, you are not able to see that it's tiny ripples. But actually, the fact is, these are the addition and overlapping hundreds of ripples. You know, a lot and lot of ripples are funny, and all together you see this. If you do a power analysis, if you, you do you 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 analyze these oscillations in four rhythm, you are able to see this. This this, this is called diagram. It, it forms very nicely some ripples. Every rate represents something. It represents different structures in the interior. What are the axes? Uh, the axis is a wave number. Wave number. It's X just one. Let me clear, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a wave number. The wave number. Okay, and the y axis? The y axis is in frequency. Yeah. Um, In meters, yes. It's corresponding to five, five minutes solar oscillation. So five minutes is corresponding to three point three millimeters. Um, okay. This movie here, I mean I forgot to tell you, here is a sensor. Sensor doesn't oscillate as in you know, a similar way as the other areas. So if you if you have a special technique, you can reconstruct the, the highly seismic wave propagation in the interior and the <coughs> interacts with the sunspot. This shows how the highly seismic waves propagate in the interior. See, if we observe from here, this red wave can go to here and, and go to here and, can, and can, can come back. So it brings not just the interior information, it also brings the other side information back to us. That means we are able to see the other side of the sun. So the sun is not transparent to light, but it's transparent to highly seismic waves. Now, let me, let me tell you how to see this picture. This month, we see some you know, sensors here. When the when the sun this this, this the sun is facing us. Fifteen days earlier, when this this part of the sun is on the other side, we are not able to see it. 
we say some, you know, some sense about it. And 15 days later, when this side, uh, this intruding, intruding look is by to the other side, we are in the sea. So the high seismology tells her, helps us to see the other side as regions. So what, what data do you collect? Yeah, we collect uh, Doppler, Doppler. Yeah. Uh, um. On a photosphere, every minute we get it, you know, it's just like uh, we take, we take the, the picture of the sun every single minute. One picture, one minute. Um, just like that. So is that Mackerson? This is Mackerson Dollar image. The velocity, the line to side velocity. We also can see below the sun. Look at here, this is a very large sensor. We're getting away. Here's another one. <coughs> Come here, but here, nothing. Nothing in the surface. Right? This is surface. And now something below is happening. This is 60,000 kilometers below the surface. It's happening. And then a few hours later, we see something emerging in the photosphere. And it continues to grow larger and larger. So that means, you know, a few, one day, a few hours, 10 hours or 20 hours earlier, before excess balls form in the, in the photosphere, we are, able, we are able to see 60,000 kilometers below the surface. Okay, we can see the solar internal uh, rotation. The sun is not a rigid body. It rotates, then has differential rotation. It rotates faster in the equator, slower in the polar region. In the equator, it rotates 25 days, one second. And in the polar region, it's more than 34 days. In 10 days longer. Well, for each, for any one that is it has also a different speed. It rotates, then let's look at this picture. If this is the equator, another equator, this is 15 degrees, this is this long, 30 degrees, this is this long. So, it's slower in the surface and becomes faster about 30 millimeters, 30,000 kilometers below the surface, and then gradually slows down, and then suddenly drops slow down, drops slower again. It forms uh, the gradient, the steel gradient here, which is called, this is called as hypercar. People believe this is where here or here, this region, along this line, this dash line, is where a magnetic field is generated. So this is another recent result of the marino marino flow. Okay, this is marino flow is is a lot is a, is a, you can have a vertical cut the the flow structures the lines. We have an outside structure. We have we have two two cells two separation cells. But previously, the result is the one has one single cell. Our recent result proved that the previous result is wrong. And the, the, the marital simulations, it has two cells. Could be more than two? Could be more than two, but at least two. So this made news headlines in the past uh, two months. It was me, yes. The previous so the model of the dynamo faces no challenge. What is the solar dynamo? Dynamo, dynamo theory explains how magnetic field is generated in the sun and how once it is generated, how the magnetic field is transported to the surface and then migrates to the other areas and then back to the interior. In this model, it revise the single cell single cell simulation to transport the magnetic fields from the from along this circle from the you know, surface is, is, is from low latitudes to high latitudes and then back to the interior. The, in this area it's uh, the magnetic field got magnified and then come back. 
for the settings. But our new observation show that this model is not right. The interface is new chasm. Okay. To, end my, to summarize my talk, I have three, three points. Our style size is very fascinating with many kinds of jaw dropping events. The sun has its magnetic activity cycles, and one cycle is one years. But the current one is very unusual in many aspects. One is that it has very low sensible activity. One is that before the start of this cycle, it has a very, very long minimum with the longest spot these days. The third information is high seismology, with its ability to see the invisible provides us the sole interior information with great scientific significance. So, the last message, for more information, please like us with my little SDO on Facebook. Little SDO, little SDO is at the Stanford. You know, some, some people in our group will post the information of the sun every day, not every day, maybe a couple of days. So, like us. Thank <laughs> <laughs>